Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to today's class. It's our third lesson on the second topic of Form 3 work, which is called Refraction of Light. As usual, let me commence by giving the quote of the day, which states that nobody can do everything, but at least everybody can do something. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at refractive index in terms of velocity. And let's start by defining what we mean by absolute refractive index of the medium. So this refers to the refractive index of a ray traveling from vacuum to the medium. When we talk of medium, we, we are talking of a medium such as a glass. We can also have water. That is just a material medium. But when we talk of a vacuum, we are talking of a place without any material a uh, medium for example a vacuum can be a place without air such that there is no any material medium uh, for that particular ray to travel so that means whenever we talk of absolute refractive index uh, we must be talking of electromagnetic uh, waves for example we can have the light waves was one of the examples uh, that we gave under electromagnetic waves you can just refer to uh, uh, a certain topic in form one work which was called waves one you realize that we did categorize light as an example of an electromagnetic wave that is waves that do not need any material medium in order for them to be transmitted so uh, absolute refractive index which is denoted by n will be given by velocity of light in the vacuum divided by the velocity of light in the material so remember we are talking of light because uh, light is an electromagnetic wave so that means it can be transmitted from the vacuum and also to the medium that is it can travel in a vacuum that is a place without air then it can also transit to uh, a medium that is a place with air now a uh, uh, refractive index of the material is usually given by uh, velocity of light in air divided by the velocity of light in that particular material. But if we compare the values of the refractive indices of vacuum and air, we realize that a vacuum usually has a, a, a value of refractive index, which is usually equal to 1, and air usually, have, uh, usually has a refractive index of around 1.00028. So if you compare the value of the refractive uh, index for the air, which is 1.0028, and the value of the refractive index for the vacuum, which is 1, you realize that these values are very close to one another. Therefore, in uh, most calculations, uh, instead of talking of uh, velocity of light in vacuum, we simply use the velocity of light in air in that particular uh, case. And that's why you have seen... Uh, that this formula, which was velocity of light in a vacuum, has been uh, replaced with velocity of light in air. The, re the reason being uh, the value of the refractive index of the vacuum and that of air are very close to one another. And therefore, uh, for simplicity in calculation, we just use the values for the uh, velocity, that is the refractive index for the air instead of the vacuum because those values are very close to one another therefore in calculations this is the formula that you will be encountering in most cases so you just need to know that the refractive index of a material n is always in terms of velocities is always given by velocity of light in air divided by velocity of light in that particular material and when we talk of a material we can be talking of maybe glass we can be talking of water etc then whenever we have um, uh, we can also have a certain relationship whereby uh, a, a, a light or a array of light can be traveling from medium one to medium two so when uh, we usually have when you take the refractive index in the first medium times the sign of the angle of incidence in the first medium then that value should be a constant so what we mean by a constant is that when you take refractive index in the medium one, for example, if this was maybe a uh, glass, assume that the, red, the ray of light was maybe moving from uh, glass maybe to water or vice versa. Therefore, the refractive index in the first medium, which is N1, 
uh, multiplied by the sine of the angle of incidence in the first medium, which is theta 1, then this value is a constant. So that means uh, such a value should be equal to the refractive index of the ray, the same same ray in medium 2, for example, water, times the angle of refraction in that particular second medium, which is theta 2. So you are simply saying that n sine theta is equal to a constant where n, of course, is the refractive index of the medium and theta is the angle between the ray and the normal in that particular uh, medium. For example, in this case, the angle between my ray and the normal, we are simply talking of the angle of incidence, which we are denoting by theta 1 then times the refractive index in that particular medium, that is medium 1, which is N1. So N1 times sine theta 1 should be equal to uh, the refractive index of uh, medium 2, which is denoted by N2, uh, multiplied by the angle of refraction or the angle between the normal and that particular ray in that particular medium. So this relationship is very important, whereby you can be given maybe uh, the two angles, the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction, then maybe, and one of the uh, refractive indices, then you are asked to find the other refractive index. So we usually use this particular uh, relationship here. So remember when we talk of n sine theta being equal to a constant, it means uh, if we are also talking of array maybe moving through even four medium, it shall be n1 sine theta 1 is equals to n2 sine theta 2 is equals to n3 sine theta 3 is equals to n4 sine theta 4. So we are talking of a constant because uh, it depends with the number of medium through which that particular ray is moving uh, from and towards. So n1 sine theta 1 is equals to n2 sine theta 2 or simply put the refractive index of the first medium times the sine of the angle of incidence of the ray in that particular medium should be equal to the refractive index of the second medium times the sine of the angle of refraction of that particular ray in the second medium. So let's look at an example which reads that uh, given that the refractive index of diamond is 2.42 and the velocity of light in air is 3.0 times 10 power 8 meters per second, calculate the velocity of light in diamond. So just a point to note here, the velocity of light in air is usually a constant, which is a 3.0 times 10 power 8 meters per second. And remember, uh, as we shall be looking at a certain topic in Form 4 called electromagnetic spectrum, we shall see that all uh, electromagnetic waves, they do propagate or move with uh, a constant velocity, which is the velocity of light the velocity of light, uh, it can be in air or maybe in a vacuum. So this value is usually a constant. So in some questions, maybe someone may not give you the velocity of light in air. So in case you are not given, just use 3.0 times 10 power 8 meters per second as your velocity of light in air because it is usually a constant. But if you are given a different value, stick to the value that you've been given. So we are required to calculate the velocity of light in the diamond. Now, because we are given one of the velocities and you are given one of the refractive indices, we just look for a formula that relates velocity of light in air and in the medium and of course the refractive uh, indices that we want to find. Now, we know that refractive index is equal to velocity of light in air divided by velocity of light in the medium. But in this case, the medium is now diamond. So we shall say uh, refractive index of diamond, the refractive index of diamond will be equal to velocity of light in air divided by velocity of light in the diamond. So because we are given refractive index of diamond is 2.42, we shall simply say 2.42 is equal to velocity of light in air, which is uh, usually 3.0 times 10 power 8 meters per second, divided by velocity of light in the diamond. So, uh, to find velocity of light in, in the diamond, I can do cross multiplication whereby I'll multiply uh, or I multiply by the LCM on both sides whereby velocity of light in the diamond will cancel out from the right hand side. Therefore, we shall have uh, 2.42 times velocity of light in 
the diamond being equal to 3.0 times 10 power 8 meters per second so of course to find velocity of light in diamond i'll simply divide both sides by 2.42 so that i remain with velocity of light in diamond so velocity of light in diamond will be equal to 3.0 times 10 power 8 meters per second divided by 2.42 and remember refractive indices are usually constants it is because it is a ratio whose units usually cancels out so you perform this quotient i expect you to obtain 1.24 times 10 power 8 meters per second is your final answer uh, read that uh, given that the velocity given that the velocity of light in water is 2.26 times 10 power 8 meters per second and uh, uh, in glass is 2.0 times 10 power 8 meters per second we are requir required to calculate the value of angle theta below the value of the angle theta here below now to calculate that particular value we shall first use uh, the velocities that you have been given because we know the relationship between uh, refractive indices and the velocity so we know that um, uh, refractive index because this particular ray is moving from water to glass therefore the, refra the refractive index n from water to glass will be equal to velocity of light in the water because water is the medium through which that particular ray is incident divided by velocity of light uh, in glass because glass is the uh, medium through which our ray is being refracted therefore n that is n w glass simply means refractive index uh, of light in water uh, towards the glass that the ray is moving from water medium to the glass medium as you can see in this particular diagram so my ray is moving from water medium to the glass medium therefore velocity the refractive index from water to glass will be velocity of light in water divided by velocity of light in glass so i'm using this because i'm given the two uh velocities of light in those particular medium therefore n water to glass will be equal to velocity of light in water in water have been given as 2.26 times 10 power 8 meters per second divided by velocity of light in glass have been given as 2.0 times 10 power 8 meters per second so of course 10 power 8 and 10 power 8 will simply cancel out therefore 2.26 divided by 2.0 you'll obtain 1.1 three again remember refractive index is a constant that's why we don't have any units here because they do cancel out therefore now that we have refractive index from water to glass we can again use another relationship whereby we know that refractive index from water to glass is the same as saying uh, the sign of the angle of incidence that is in water divided by the sign of the angle of refraction in glass that is courtesy of Snell's law. So refractive index from water to glass is equal to the sine uh, theta, that is the angle in the water medium divided by the sine of R, where R is the angle between the normal and our refracted ray in the glass medium. So we shall say N uh, W water will be equal to refractive index from water to glass we have already found it as 1.13 will be equal to sine theta which is the angle of incidence uh, in the first medium that is in the water medium divided by sine r which is the angle of refraction in the second medium or the angle between the normal and our ray therefore 1.13 is equal to sine theta divided by sine 30 degrees and we know that sine 30 degrees is 0 0.5 therefore 1.13 is equal to sine theta divided by 0 0.5 if i multiply both sides by 0 0.5 i'll remain with sine theta being equal to uh, 0 0.5 times 1.13 which gives me 0 0.565 therefore if i want to find theta i'll find sine inverse on both sides therefore theta will be equal to the sine inverse of 0 0.565 you press this one on your calculator, you'll obtain 34.4 degrees. Remember, for the angles, we usually take it to uh, a maximum of uh, one degree, that is uh, one decimal point, because usually the angles, uh, the maximum angle that can be measured by a normal protractor is 
uh, correct to one decimal point. That's why I'm taking 34.4 degrees. Then example three reads that if the refractive index of glass is three over two, uh, calculate the refractive index of the medium in the figure below. So we simply look at our diagram here. We have been given the refractive ind index in the glass. And we can see that our ray is moving from the glass medium towards the other medium two, which we are not given. So we are asked to find the refractive index in the medium. So from a form our formula that we have uh, just learned that n1 sin theta 1 should be equal to n2 sin theta 2, whereby n1 is the refractive index uh, in the medium from which our light is coming from, then uh, theta 1 is the angle between the normal and the ray, in this case, which is the angle of incidence, should be equal to n2, that is the, ref the refractive index in the second medium, that is medium, our medium 2, multiplied by the sign of the angle of refraction or the angle between the normal and our ray in the second medium. Therefore, n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2, which is equal to n1, that is the refractive index in the first medium, which is glass, we are given as 3 over 2. Therefore, 3 over 2 sine angle of incidence, which is 60 degrees, should be equal to n2, which is the angle, uh, that is the refractive index in the second medium, n2, times the sign of the angle of refraction in the second medium or the angle between the normal and our second uh, the refracted ray which is 30 degrees so if i divide both sides by sine 30 degrees i'll have 1.5 that is 3 over 2 is the same as 1.5 times sine 60 degrees divided by the sign of 30 which is equals to n2 where n2 is the refractive index in the second medium Therefore, N2 shall be equal to 1.5 times sine 60 divided by 0 0.5, which is equal to 1.5 divided by 0 0.5, you will get 3. Therefore, 3 times the sine of 60 shall give you two whole number, uh, 164831 divided by 275603, which is approximately 2.6 as our refractive index in our second medium. Then of course I have an exercise here that I recommend you should try at your own free time to gauge whether you have understood the examples and the concept that we have just learned. So we've come to the end of our class today but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that nobody can do everything but at least everybody can do something. So the quote is encouraging us to at least do one thing that will make the world a better place for living. I believe that each one of us was born with a unique gift that can help to solve most of the problems that we are experiencing in the world today. Therefore, your aim should be to keep experimenting until you find out what gift truly aligns with your inner self. And of course, they usually say that the purpose of uh, your gift is to give it away or to uh, use it for the benefit of others. And lastly, remember that every human behavior is either an act of love or a cry for love. How I do pray that all your behaviors will be acts of love instead of acts that lead to cry for love. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. This is Kind Tuition Academy. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you'll get a notification. Thank you very much uh, for your continued support. Uh, it really means a lot to me. So until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy.